Am I having deja vu? I thought we were already in the room and we looted the skeleton and everything. Yeah, you can move up to the skeleton. I had just suggested some lights and stuff. So so you could actually see the pale blue light now. Oh, nice. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, there's... Yeah, we looted this guy right here on the ground. We didn't yeah, go over the edge, right? four stone sarcophagus as well. One in each corner of the room. Oh boy, one for each of us. You're all going to open them up at the same time too, right? You're all going to go to each corner and say, okay, three, two, one, open. <laughs> I think that's what you should no, do. Hey, no, why not? I think one at a time. That way we only fight one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll write how, do you, how do you know you're going to even fight anything? All right, let's look at this guy. Sure. On there could be another of, spider. Uh, uh, could be. Yeah, these are these are just stone sarcophaguses. There's there's names on them. You know the dates from which they lived and they died. And yeah, these are these are actually the the wooden coffins or the wooden sarcophaguses. And the, the one in the middle, that's the large one that has like a like a body of or a replica who's buried inside. And it's the one in the middle is, you know, raised on a sarcophagus, well, on a dais, a couple of diases. And then those, those candles are, uh, you know, they're the source of the blue light that is emitting. Okay, Can so I um, see where that blue light was coming from? Can I roll like a perception or something? Oh, it's it's right in front of you where you're at. Those yeah, candles that are on top of the sarcophagus, those are the sources that's emitting the blue light. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. And as you, right, as you ladies get closer, your lights overtake the blue light, but it's still there. As you can see, there's still blue light. I would like to investigate them, but I do not wish to be near it when somebody opens it. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a female figure on the top of the sarcophagus, and it it says that it's. You know, she's part of Roy. She was part of royalty on the inscription, and it has the the dates of when she was alive, which was about a hundred years ago from the current time, which is around twenty nine hundred or something like that. Unless the dead body moves, I do not plan on desecrating. No. Yeah. So the one in front of me, does it have a name on it? Sure. What? Who's in it? You can tell me who's in it. What name is on the sarcophagus? This is a like a crypt that has a an entire family, by the way. Because all oh, of the this last is Billy Bo Jim Bob. That's Billy Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Boat, Billy Jib, Jim Bob is buried in here. That's what the hey, inscription says. Hey, I think says. my cousins knew him. <laughs> I wonder if they buried his sword in with him. We should check. I want to check the one in the middle. Can I? Can I lift up the sarcophagus? Sure. Not, not the whole thing, like the lid. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, you're a half orc. You're pretty strong, so you may be able to actually move that whole thing. So, but yeah, the lid you can push on it, and you can hear the stone on stone grinding. So yeah, you could definitely move it if you want to. I move it just enough and peek inside. Do I see so, anything? Do you do because as you start to move the lid of the sarcophagus all of a sudden a hand 
kind of wraps around the lid and slams the lid over and, and sparks are flying everywhere from the stone on stone grinding. The lid falls onto the floor. It cr basically breaks in half. And it looks like some undead start to bust through the wooden coffins as well surrounding the room on the exterior of the room. And we are going to roll initiative. So, and in fact, we're not even going to roll initiative. I'm going to let all of you ladies have first attack as these skeletons and a zombie are starting to pull themselves out of the coffins and stuff. I'm going to give them all the flat footed condition and I will let all of you have first dibs on attacks. So the, there's a huge, now this, this uh, sarcophagus that you actually pushed the lid off of Rive, it has a huge, very big zombie that's starting to sit up and climb its way out of it. As you can see, that's a, that's a pretty big, pretty big zombie. So everybody go ahead and on your character sheet, roll initiative. No, no if I, you know, yeah, you can go ahead and roll initiative now. Uh, but I'm still going to let you have this round to attack. Nice rolls. So uh, who wants to go first in this free round that I'm giving you? As the four skeletons and the big zombies start to climb out of these coffins. Who wants to go first? Not all at once. All right, so it looks like a uh, Kalen. Uh, Kalen attacked first with a produce flame spell. Yes, sir. All right, so that is a that's a miss. Get a lot of feedback. All right, so we'll go ahead and go next. Uh, we'll just go right on down the line. So, Rise, what would you like to do? Well, I already have my axe out, and um, I would just like to to aim at the neck of uh, the big zombie that's in front of me. Sure. Swipe away. Yeah, this thing. And, and in fact, uh, before you attack, let me give it the flat-footed condition, which is going to give you... Uh, even uh, a little bit better bonus as well. So, in fact, did I give that to you? Yeah, I gave it to you, and I know I dropped it on the zombie, so. All right, so let's give flat-footed to... All right, the zombie, so now you'll get a bonus. So you swing away with your axe. Uh, that's a 17. Let's drag that attack over on the zombie to see if it is a hit. And it is. So let's roll some damage as the zombie is getting up and you smash it with your great axe. All right. So that zombie, yeah, you take a huge chunk out a bunch of you know ribs kind of fall on the ground and it uh. does a, yeah this black type of pus and ooze and the zombie groans uh, as it's standing up so let's go next to gloria what would All you right. like to do so i'm going to take my rapier and i am going to knock at this Undead and skeleton, and hopefully knock its bones all apart. Sure things. Billy Bob Boney. <laughs> all right, nice hit with a fourteen. You definitely smash the skeleton as it's climbing up out of the wooden wooden coffin. Oh my goodness, that is awesome! So as soon as this That's thing great. sits up, you know the lid kind of shatters. It sits up. You you take your weapon and just smash it and it just it sounds like glass shattering as bones bits of bone and a skull kind of spins when you hit it and then it flies off so that skeleton is destroyed nice shot not today billy bob and now on to the next one <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. How about you, Thanis? Can I throw the alchemist fire at the one to the farthest northeast? Skeleton sure. number one. Yeah, you can do that. All right. I don't really know. Yeah, you can you can do that. There should be uh, an attack that you can use on your sheath. There you go. You throw it, light the wick. Oh, it smashes all over the skeleton. It catches it on fire, and you can go ahead and roll your damage. I believe it'll take ongoing damage too, won't it? Leave. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's nice. Oh, very good. Yeah, it takes a uh, uh, fire damage. Are the skeletons resistant to fire damage? Well, let's see. They may be. Oh, they're wooden. The wooden sarcophagus is it? <clears throat> hmm. No, they have. They definitely have some resistance. So yeah, they they have some resistance to it. But as you mentioned, you know the the wooden coffin. I mean, it is old wood. It catches on fire, and I'll give that skeleton some some extra damage. So why don't you give me a D four, and then we'll apply that damage to the skeleton, because with its resistance, it uh, it absorbed all of the damage from your uh, your alchemy bomb. So, but we'll say that the skeleton does take two damage. And let's see, I'll add that. So you throw it a nice long lobbed shot over there on the, on the skeleton. It's got a couple of wounds. So now we're gonna go ahead and use the initiative that was rolled and Gloria, you're up now. So you get your three actions. All right, so it looks like you're taking one action, moving over to the skeleton. That is... Yes, I'm going to move over and attack. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 13. That's a nice hit. Yes. That's a 20. Yay. Yep. And it's still flat-footed because it hasn't had an attack yet. So it did resist a little bit of your damage. Uh, and it it is wounded. So very good. Couple of bones go flying off of it as you hit it with your weapon, with your yeah. rapier. All right, so you got one action. So I can hit it again with the rapier, but that'll be at the plus two instead of the plus seven, correct? That is correct. That will be the second little button on your attack. All right, so that looks like that is a miss. So we'll go ahead and you can pass it on to Ride. So you're up now. That big hulking... Uh, zombie has now stood up. It's still flat-footed because it hasn't gotten uh, an attack yet, so you'll still get a bonus on it. Nice. Okay. Um, so this time I'm going to swing again, and I'm going to aim for its kneecaps. <laughs> You're gonna cap it, huh? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you swing away. Wow. And you smash that zombie and it's a critical. So the uh, system will automatically add in bonus damage for you and calculate it. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. That is the maximum amount of damage. So, yeah, as, as you hit this in the kneecap, you basically swing through the first knee, take the second knee out, and he's just falls unconscious dead as he gives one last groan. Uh, and then he just is lifeless on the ground. Nice shot. So you still have two actions if you want to move and attack something else as well. Because don't forget the three action point economy in Pathfinder is pretty awesome. That's right. Um, uh, I'll go, I'll go over here. Sure. Yeah. You want to move up to the, that's the skeleton that your sister had hit with the alchemist fire. So yeah, as you get closer, you can feel the heat coming off of not only the skeleton that's that's cindering as well, but the coffin's on fire. So yeah, feel free. That's your second action for moving, and feel free to 
Uh, use your second attack, which is going to be at minus five. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and attack. Um, sure. I think that's good. That that was a really good damage roll in the first one. The two twelves. Yeah, that doesn't happen very often. I was kind of surprised. I'm not sure what I did right. <laughs> he did everything right. <laughs> the adrenaline. All right. Ooh. So that is fire. a hit. Yeah. So yeah. Smash away damage again. I'm going to aim for its rib cage. Uh, you should have come up here. Full pump. I only a one. Eh, it, a one, a one yeah. I think you were just so hyped up from that first swing. The second, the second attack was just <laughs> just flubbed out the damage. But yeah, the skeleton's still up. Uh, it's still on fire, and we will go ahead and go to the skeletons now. So, I do have a question, real quick. Sure. Yeah. Ask away. Um. It says that the skeleton took zero damage. Is yeah, that because from of the me? resistance? Yep, yep. Because uh, yeah, it has slashing resistance. So, and your axe is slashing damage, so it will absorb up to five damage because it has a slashing of five resist. And you did gotcha. five, so basically you did damage to it. But you're like, I know I hit that thing, but it doesn't look like it affected it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. So this skeleton guard that is by we'll we'll let uh, once Kaylin gets back we'll let her get her attack, but the skeleton is going to attack her first, and it has its scimitar, and I'm going to take the flat-footed condition off of this skeleton now, so it won't have any any negative or detrimental effects on it. And it slashes its rusty scimitar and hits Kit. Wow, hits her with a 25. That's almost, that's got to be almost a crit. So, Kaylin will take a total of six slashing damage. So, she is wounded. And the skeleton is going to move out of its coffin. And then it will attack Kaylin a second time at minus five. And that second attack is going to miss, and she's going to duck her head, and, you know, the scimitar goes over her head. So now let's go to the skeleton that is on you, Gloria. It will not be flat-footed anymore, so I will take that effect off. And it will turn towards you and slash at you with its rusty scimitar. All right, so it hits you with an 18. That's a nice hit. You'll take a total of five slashing damage, which you are now heavily wounded. Uh, it will also move here, and then it will attack you a second time at minus five. And it slashes at you, critically fumbling, and it basically takes its scimitar, you duck, and it throws it because it critically fumbles, and it hits the wall behind you. So that is it for the skeleton, and we'll let uh, Kaylin get a second action when she gets back. So Thanith, you're up now. All right, the I'm going to attack uh, the guard skeleton number two. With my sling. Ooh, so you take your sling, you wind it up, you let go of it, and it misses. So you still have you still have two more actions. The second okay. is a hit. So go ahead and roll damage. <clears throat> and your sister's right in front of the skeleton, so you're getting a you got a good shot in as this stone just kind of flings right past your head, uh, 
writhe and it hits the skeleton and bones go fl uh, flying everywhere. So you do uh, another four damage as the skeleton is destroyed. So I was hitting this one next to Kalen, right? Uh, this, yeah, this time. I, th I thought you attacked the other one before. Let's see. Let's take it off. No, so. They're both the same. Yeah. I was so both number two, yeah. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, stone doesn't fling past your head, writhe. It by Galen. So all right, so nice shots. Uh you still have one more action. What would you like to do? Would you like to move or attack another one at minus ten? Yeah, I think it's minus <clears throat> five, but yeah, can, will I hit writhe if I go over there? Uh if you use a sling over there i mean there's a chance i mean if you roll a uh like a one or something or if you if you critically fumble then you could possibly hit your sister like make you roll damage on her she looks like she's she can take it <laughs> <laughs> she's okay <laughs> oh, i didn't miss that so oh uh, yeah i mean i missed. critically missed yeah I didn't critical, but not bad. So nice, right. nice going. Let's go with the, the skeleton that is engaged with you, Writhe, the one that resisted your the blow. So let's go ahead and take this thing as it as it uses. Uh, actually, it, it will have its sword in its hand, so it's going to go ahead and slash at you with its scimitar. And you dodge out of the way. So very nice. It will attack you again as it moves over here. So it will get a minus five on its second attack. And it misses again. So it's had all its three actions. And we are going to get a round two. And Gloria, you are up. So aren't the monsters a lot more challenging now than those first groups of rats where I only did one action? So yeah, Pathfinder can get pretty pretty brutal. So okay, Gloria, you're up round two. And I'm not happy because this one hurt me, so I'm gonna knock the tar out of it. Yeah, you are heavily wounded. As you swipe your rapier at it and it hits the skeleton. As it as it cackles when you hit it. <laughs> Remember the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt when when we were when we were kids. I love that show. I remember that. Uh, oh, do you really? Wow. Wow. You young kids don't know what the Crypt Keeper is. <laughs> nice hit. So let's roll your damage. Oops, so I have two hit. I got well, I accidentally did a dead. second one because I thought I had a miss. Yeah, no, so no we'll do the first one. Let's do your damage, yeah. And don't forget, you'll also have a, a bonus point for you as well. So don't forget, you got a hero point to start the session also. So you can reroll your attacks or whatever. All right, so yeah, you did a little bit of... You think you might have done some damage, but you're like, this thing didn't... doesn't even look like it was affected. So that resistance... Can I, can I count that second one? Since uh, I did two of them, was it? Yeah, sure. We'll we'll let you do that. So you can roll damage again, because that roll had minus five on it. So it does wound the skeleton. It does take one slashing damage. So you that's your second action. Would you like to take a third at minus ten? I, actually, I'm going to take a jump back and try to get away from this thing. Are you? All right, so you can take your third action. You won't take any attack of opportunity because the skeleton doesn't have it. And you basically get away from that thing. Run away. All right, run away. My dad, I remember my dad took me to that to see Monty Python, the Holy Grail. I actually remember going to the theater and seeing that. That just shows my age. All right, Ryan, you're up. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to aim for this sucker's head. Uh, let's see here. Wiping away with your great axe. Oh, wow, look at that critical. Wow. 
second critical. Good job. Let's see if you can roll yeah, two roll twelves the dice again. Like you did before. Yeah, right. Not bad. I mean, you destroy the skeleton as you smash it with your great axe. Bones go flying everywhere, hitting the walls. That skeleton is incapacitated as well. So nice, nice shot. So that was your, that was what your first attack. So you still have two actions left. So you can, you can move and attack that second skeleton down there if you want, or you can just hold fast. You can do whatever you want. I am going to, I think I am, I'm going to, um, well, actually, I'm going to turn to my sister, Thaneth. Thaneth, are you planning on throwing another bomb? <laughs> I don't no. want to be in the way. Okay. <laughs> so I am going to go down here to this skeleton then and uh, take a good shot at it. Sure thing. Yeah, you, you basically put your hand on the stone sarcophagus and jump over it. Not a problem at all. And you get down to the skeleton and slash away with your great ax. Blue hair flying. Isn't that, isn't that cool how the blue light kind of just kind of oh, appears no. around the room when you all aren't in the range of it? That's awesome. Oh, a critical miss. Yeah. Well, we're not using the critical hit deck, uh, the critical miss deck. So you just swing and your ax goes smashing into the stone wall. Sparks go flying everywhere and you miss the skeleton. So we are going next to the skeleton that you actually just hit as it's he cackling at you. Now, he did get it, lucky. Now, wasn't this the skeleton that lost its sword with a critical it miss is. on me? Correct, yes. It is going to punch you with its just its bare bone hands. So I'm going to give it the... It, it would still be the same... In fact, it's going to slash at you with its claws now. Now that it doesn't have the first slash, it's going to slash at you again. <laughs> it goes into this uh, whirling dervish of a flurry, attacking you three times. So the second attack is a hit. And it slashes you for a total of four damage, wounding you. Sorry, my voice is breaking up. <clears throat> That's the effects of uh, COVID still. And the third attack at minus 10 misses you. So it's slash, 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 and you take the hit of one of the claws. So Kalen's not back yet. We're going to go to Thaneth. You are up. Love that bomb, Thaneth. Go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> now, how, how far will my sling go? Will it go that far? Uh, it should. I mean, it, it should tell you on the, let's see, let's go to your inventory. It's 50. Yeah, it, you, yeah, you're only, each square is like, how movement works in Pathfinder 2 is the first diagonal square is 5 foot, the second diagonal is 10 foot, and then the third is 5, 10, 5, 10. So, yeah, you're only 5, 15, 20, 30 feet, basically. So yeah, that's a, that's a critical miss. Now, seeing that your sister is right in front of this, uh, I'm going to give you a 50-50 chance of hitting your sister. So why don't you uh, go to the percentile die in the lower left-hand corner and right-click on it, and then click on that percent symbol on the pop-up radio menu and then throw it into the chat and we'll one to one to 50 you'll hit your sister 51 to 100 you'll miss her and that's not in the pathfinder rules that's just my own kind of on the fly type of thing because it would make sense on the 10 side i don't of die, see a percentage when you right click on the die there should be a radial menu pop up that says two times all the way to percent there you go all right, so you hit your sister, so go ahead and roll damage and drop it on your sister. <laughs> as you get sister, beamed, why? <laughs> yeah. as you get beamed into the head. At know, least she didn't area. hit you with a firebomb. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and at least she rolled a one minimum damage. So yeah, you're you're good to go there.
I'm still right. going to go again. Maybe at yeah. the last minute she knew she was going to hit me on accident. <laughs> he softened up a bit. Oh, no All way. Right. No way. <laughs> another one. <laughs> Give me another D100 percentile. Oh, my goodness. All right. She's just one about... <laughs> Did I do something wrong? <laughs> Was it something here. I said? Oh, I'm moving down here with my good. third one. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that would be your third action, actually. So you won't get any other attacks. So maybe that might be a good thing for this round. So we're gonna go to round three, and Gloria, you're up as you just watched your sister pummel your other sister with two sling stones. <laughs> and I'm thinking my one sister doesn't want to share me with the other sister. <laughs> I will say that's probably the first time I've ever seen that happen, DMing a game. So congratulations on that first. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, she's blocking me from her. Oh, <laughs> holy crap. Third critical <laughs> miss in a row. Yeah, well, I mean, you're not using any kind of ranged weapon and she's your sister's not in the way. So, yeah, that's just a very bad miss. However, adding the critical hit and critical fumble cards would actually be pretty cool. So if you roll, if you get a crit, we roll, we draw a card. And if you get a critical fumble, you draw a card. That might be something that we could add in later on. So, all right. So that was your second action, your third action at minus five. Oh man, three ones and a two. Unbelievable. <clears throat> so we will move on to uh, Rive as you're kind of shaking the cobwebs and you can see the little birds and stars flying around your head from taking two to the back of the head from your sister. Gosh, I'm mean. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, take my great ax and I'm going to swing it up, swing it down from, from above. Let's see. There you go. Overhand blow, let's try to take that thing out. Wow, nice. Your third critical of the day. Holy cow. Wow. Nice. You, yeah, you destroy that skeleton pretty easily. So yeah, your your sister just basically took took out just about the entire room. So you ladies are out of combat. I'm gonna I'm gonna go heal my sister. <laughs> So I have medicine. It has a plus four to wave. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what I do? That's it. Look right. Yep. Yep. So if you got the medicine skill, you can, it takes you 10 minutes. So it's going to take you 10 minutes to, you know, get out. You're going to administer, you know, first aid and all that other good stuff. So uh, let's see. Yeah, so you're going to treat wounds. Uh, you can also open up the skills on the right-hand side, and you can do a DC of 15. So you do, you are successful with a 17. So let's see. Uh, you can go ahead and heal. Let's see, let me read this real quick. It says you have to have healers tools. Do you have do you have the healers tools? I do. Okay, very good. I do. So yeah, you take ten minutes. You treat the wounds for your sister, and let's see. I'm just reading this. So if you're an expert, you do more. So okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you'll get back a total of, looks like, 10 hit points. Man, that's pretty good. <clears throat> so you'll get back 10 wounds. So I will go ahead and... You've only got one wound, so you're feeling you're feeling good again, that's for sure. So, Rive, you're a little wounded. You can treat yourself, and you can treat Kaylin as well, because she has six wounds. So the way that 
the way that it works is it takes 10 minutes every time you treat someone. So we're already 10 minutes into where you treated your sister Glory. You could take another 10 and treat Writhe and then 10 and treat Kalen. So that would be a total of 30 minutes for a rest. Okay. Which is pretty cool. So why don't you do a, a, a medicine check on Writhe and it will also be a DC 15. Very nice. So that's that's not a critical. Now, if it's a critical, like if you would have had a a bonus with a and it equal to twenty five, then I would give extra healing. You know what I mean? So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll say that you're fully healed up now, Rive, and then we'll say that Kaylin's down here as well, and you can give her a medicine check also. DC fifteen. Perfect. Yeah. Very nice healing. So she's fully healed up. And then there's also feats and stuff that you can get that will improve like the time and the the amount of healing. And if you raise your skill over time with your skill ups, then you can also do more than 10. You can go from like 10 to 20, 20 to 30, et cetera. So that's actually, that's actually a really cool skill. So you spent 30 minutes in here and you got wanna, everybody healed. And mm -hmm. let's check all the let's check all the skeletons. I would say time to check. Yeah, for sure. Check the skeletons, check the coffins. Yeah, um, for sure. So, oh great DM, is there anything off of the huge hulking zombie that would be a good trophy that's not a body part? There you know, actually there is because this this huge hulking zombie had a like a like a sash around it and in the sash you were able to find this wooden plank and after looking at it it's a very it's a very common magical item and it's called an ever burning torch and what the ever burning torch does is anytime you want light you just turn the torch on basically and it's it looks like it's flames but it has no heat or anything like that but it produces the same light as a regular torch would so it's actually a really really cool magic item but it is it is a uh, it's a common item you're not going to need to roll on it because you've seen it in all of the different shops and stuff so i will go ahead and add this ever burning torch into the party sheet and then if you want it or anybody else all they have to do is just open up the party sheet in the upper right hand corner go to the inventory tab and just take that little red dragon icon and drag it onto the inventory tab of your character sheet so as everyone else is you know as stanith is using her you know time to mend everyone's wounds you also find a beautiful shield that is inside one of the other wooden coffins and this is what the shield looks like which i actually have an image for it it's a it's a smaller shield almost a little larger than a buckler and it has the face of a lion on it and it doesn't it doesn't look like it has any kind of magical properties because there's no magical runes or anything on it but it is made of a, of a bronze and it looks like you could probably sell this for around five gold so it looks like it's more of a decorative shield but if you want to use that as your shield so you can have that you know the lion head on it feel free to you know, you can actually have that as a shield to use. And that is everything that you find in this Forgotten Crypt, and you you give it a really good once-over. So 30 minutes have gone by. You found well, I, all I'm of your treasures. No hidden doors or anything for me to look for. I'll tell you what, you can give me a perception roll. And I, I usually re -roll, uh, reward 20s. Oh, so close. So close. So far away, though. <laughs> Sorry. But no, there's, there's no other secret doors or secret hidden compartments or anything like that. So 
you know, it's it's like I mentioned in our first session. I mean, uh, if every every location that you go into, if you ladies want to do a manual search, feel free to give me a perception check, and I always reroll. I always reward twenties. So, yeah, if you want to, if you also want to take a, you know, a look around, go for it. And if you get a twenty, I'll usually reward you. I'm liking how that blue light flickers as you move around. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Sure. I grab my sister's arm and drag her out of there with us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you drag it. Dragging her. Okay. So, yeah, you're back to the intersection where the only other way to go is to the southwest. Let's do it. All right. So it looks like Thanith is right. taking point. I, I suppose everybody's got their weapons drawn and everything else, right? Yep. And I made another. <clears throat> well, I, I think I don't think I can make an alchemist fire in that thirty minutes, though. Can I? You can you can actually make two alchemist fires with an action because you have your uh, special feature that you get your what is it called your infused reagents. So yeah, you can you can take a you get four infused reagents a day. So as a I believe it's as an action, you can create two of any formula in your book with one action, and then you can. Rome. So you can basically make stuff every round as long as you have the infused reagents. So, <clears throat> so yes, as you, as you kind of round that corner, Gloria, you can see that there is a double door that's 10 foot wide, very beautiful Mason doors. All right. Well, I, before I walk over close to it, I'm going to start mm -hmm. looking for traps. Sure. Give me a perception roll. And this door has a sort of like a stone frame, and there's wood inside of all of the different stone framings. So your perception check reveals that there's nothing that looks to be dangerous, so no traps no pressure plates, no trip wires, nothing like that. Awesome. Then I will try to open the door if it's unlocked. Sure. Yeah. You you can open up the door. They're not locked, so you can open them up if you want. Yeah, there you go. Just click on the, the open button. There you go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, yes, this is a uh, a very small circular chamber, about 20 foot. And as soon as you open up the door, there is a very strong smell of mold. And at, when you look in, you can see all kinds of mold that's on the surface of the walls. And on the far side of this room is a statue, and it's of a giant squid, and its tentacles look like they're kind of slashing around and whatnot. So, does anyone here have the religion skill? I do. All right. You notice this as the god. Th this shrine is dedicated to the god of Gazra. And Gazra is the god of basically nature and the ocean. So why don't you give me a uh, give me a religion skill check as well, Thanith? <clears throat> All right. So yeah, there's a uh, the shrine of Gazra. There's an altar there in the middle-ish of the room, and there is a couple of unlit candles, and there is a bowl. And as you look into the bowl, the bowl is filled with a clear, looks like, just like a regular drinking water. But the water definitely looks pure and clean, that's for sure. 
Anybody thirsty? Uh, I'll stop both of you from drinking that water. <laughs> so don't even think about it. <laughs> Well, I will say Gazer is not an evil god. You would know that Gazer is not is not an evil god. That's for sure. I'll go ahead and pick up other items on the table and then grab the the liquid and drink it. Ooh, out of the bowl. I like it. So yeah, you pick up the bowl and you hold it up to your mouth and you swig. Take a big swig and. You While feel Raj this... yells in the background. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No! Yeah, you feel a tingling sensation come over you. And you feel like... And actually, you see the last of your wounds kind of cauterize and, and bind up to where it looks like you don't even have any wounds anymore. Awesome. Hey, sisters, drink a little. Look, it healed everything. Mm. I'm good. I'm now, over there shaking my head. Yeah, why don't you give me a saving throw now, also? Because you, you do feel, you know, you do feel a, a very, very good sensation coming over you, and it heals the rest of your wounds that you had. So give me a fortitude saving throw. Fortitude, okay. Where is that on this sheet? Uh, it is on the very main tab. There you go. You nice. are in good shape. Yes. Yeah, so you had a successful saving throw, which the DC for that, speaking out of character here, that was actually really high It as a 20 DC for you to be successful. So, yeah. Good job. So, yeah, uh, what else do you want to do while you're in this small little dedicated room Good. to Gazra? Let's check Gazra out. Sure, give me a perception roll. And if everybody, everyone else is kind of checking around, feel free to give me a perception roll. You don't find anything, Thana, if it, uh, you know, you give the the altar uh, and the statue a good once over. You don't find any kind of secret compartments or anything. Nor do you, Gloria. Rive, let's see what you uh, you do for a perception check. All right, let's see. Yeah, did you click on the perception right there on your, your main tab where your initiative is? Yeah, I'll I'll do it again. I, no I guess I didn't. It looks like it give you just a static number. Did it do it that time? Mm -mm, I didn't see anything roll. No. Hold on. Uh, let me try again. I guess I'm gonna create this. That's it's working on my end. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Ooh, almost a twenty. So, yeah, you find nothing else uh, in here. There's a couple of candles. If you want to take the candles, you can. I don't know if you want to do that or but You know, never know when you're going to need I a mean, candle, are, they, right? are, are there any candlesticks or, you know, does the bowl look like it's worth something? Uh, the bowl, yeah, it's an, it looks like your typical type of religious offering bowl. I mean, you may be able to get a couple of copper for it, but it doesn't look like it's really worth, oh, then I worth won't. anything. Yeah, I'm not going right. to take it then. Sure. All right. So what do you say, ladies, as you're delving deeper into this, into this area? You want to leave the doors open. You can close them if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. You can do what you want. And you see that the stairs are ascending back up. So it looks like you, you'll have to ascend about 10, 10, about 10 foot or so. No checks or anything needed on the... All right. So as you get to where you're at, 
as you get to the top step, Thanos, you you hear some commotion, right? And they're kind of like high high squeaky pitched voices in a language that let's see let's see who understands this actually we are going to use the uh language filter All right, so nobody understood this. As you hear a bunch of chatter and commotion, you get up to the top of these stairs, Writhe, and as you hear it, you kind of like, kind of put your hand up and hold everyone back because this, this looks like to be a, a huge abandoned storeroom. And what looks like it may have once been a storeroom because there's a bunch of semi-broken crates, a bunch of barrels and whatnot. But there's, with where you're at, you can actually see that there's like a large cage or maybe a cell, and it's just within your vision. And also within your vision, you can see that there are some kobolds, and there are four of them. And... It looks like they are, it looks like they are all fighting over this lock that's on a door and they're all, they're all jittering at one another. I want to throw fire at them, the middle one. By all means. Okay, so do I do it now? Yeah, we're going to have to end it here, ladies, because Spectrum just got here and they're here to work on the line outside. So I anyway. guess this is a yeah, this is a perfect time to stop. So we'll continue next week.